And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. We're here at the Harvard Club in beautiful New York City as part of the Pennsylvania Society Weekend and my firm, Quantum Communications, annual luncheon and seminar. Terrific event this year. You would never want to miss it. And we're talking about a variety of things, including the impeachment process, where this week we heard from a gaggle of legal scholars. And for the mass of America, do you really think that the Democrats scored points? They were trying to use this as an opportunity to change public opinion, to move it closer to where they were. And what did they have the effect of doing? Precisely the opposite. You had folks that frankly were unctuous, sanctimonious, these legal professors that came down out of their ivory towers to tell us, as Professor Carlin did, that she won't walk on the sidewalk in front of Trump Hotel in Washington, D.C. I mean, seriously? And then she takes the opportunity to take a shot at the president's 13-year-old son. At the end of all that, we hadn't advanced the ball any, in any regard. Each one of those witnesses said they had no factual basis on which to form their opinions. They were simply telling folks what they thought. That's all well and good couple of things in that regard. First, if you ask seven lawyers what their opinion is on any given issue, you'll probably get 10 or 11 answers. And second, something I learned very early in life, whenever you hear somebody saying, clearly the case is this, and it is so clear and obvious, it ain't so clear and obvious. But what is pretty clear at this point is that the Democrats are going to go ahead and vote on articles of impeachment. How many of their own caucus stray from the fold in that vote? We'll have to wait and see. I'm predicting at least a couple. And then it's going to go to the Senate, which, unless there's something really, really, really dramatic that takes place, is a foregone conclusion. And I don't think that bodes well for the Democrats in 2020. Also this week, we saw Major League Baseball using the number 42, the number assigned to the back of Jackie Robinson, the pioneer of Major League Baseball in terms of breaking through the racial barriers that once haunted that vaunted sport saying that they're going to cut 42 minor league franchises, including three in my home state of Pennsylvania. That really doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you stop and think about it. Minor league baseball is really where it's at. I mean, you can go to the ballpark, enjoy the game, have a hot dog, a beer, or a soda, and do it for less than it costs to take a summer vacation, which is required to go to major league ballparks these days. We'll see how that one plays out as well. This week, the campaign of Kamala Harris for president ended, or at least was suspended. A campaign that began to great fanfare and expectation kind of landed with a thud. Campaigns end when the money runs out, and hers did. She's probably at this point playing for a shot at the number two slot on a Democratic ticket. And by getting out this early, she may have preserved that opportunity. But two candidates for whom the money will not run out Tom Steyer and Mike Bloomberg, both of them billionaires, are ramping up their spending. Bloomberg right now spending more in a week than the other candidates will in a quarter. Whether or not that has any impact with voters and truly connects with them, we'll see in Iowa. Watch for those numbers. And finally, the jobs report. Better than a quarter of a million new American jobs, good paying, family sustaining jobs, created in one month alone, far surpassing all of the expectations of Wall Street and the other financial prognosticators who said maybe 180,000. We come in with over 260,000 jobs. The markets reacted, skyrocketing on the day of the announcement, the one we're taping this on. And if the economy continues to percolate upward with better jobs, family sustaining ones, better pay, rising uh, markets in the stock market indexes across the board, President Trump's going to be virtually unassailable in 2020 because it's always the economy. But for now, from the beautiful city of New York and the fabled Harvard Club, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.